I'm a servant of God. I'm here to deliver you the war of the living God. God one day called me when I was young like you. And I remember but one day I was wearing fine clothes. I was a prince. Yes, a prince. Believe it or not, I was raising in a palace. I was rich. Can you believe that? I had everything I wanted. I went to the best school you can ever talk. The best universities. In Egypt and Cairo. The country I was raised in was the most famous country in all the world. But in my time, the most famous country and powerful and strong country in the world was Egypt. And I was born in Egypt. But I was born in a slave family. One day, the king of Egypt made a decree. Kill all the children of Israel people. Like you! Like you! Like you! Like you! Like you! Kill them all! Says the king. But my mother, she saw me and she saw that I was very handsome. Mm. Do you see I'm handsome? No. Not really, right? But I was when I was a baby. I was very cute. So my mother saw in me that I was a most, the most handsome baby in the world. And she said, I'm going to keep my baby alive. So she prepared a basket and she put me into the Nile River. The daughter of the king found me. And there, I was raised by her in the palace of I was a prince of Egypt God blessed me to be a prince and I was for 40 years 40 years in the palace I don't know about your life if you have every house cars or book or good school or money and you can eat whatever you want I don't know about that but I can tell you that God can bless you to prepare you for great sins like he did for me the reason I watched the Egyptian palace for four years is to prepare me to be a special person a global leader. Do you believe that God called you to be a global leader? Oh, be ready. Because God wants to use you as a global leader. God wants to protect you to be His servant. Like me. 40 years in the palace with kings and princes together and servants at everything. The best education. I study hard. You know, I study math, I study science, I study social affairs, I study behaviors. Yes, the reason you are in your school is to be a person that God can use. I pray and bless you that you can understand what I'm saying today. Because God sent me today to deliver you His message, His words, if you believe. God then sent me to the desert. Because I was so proud to me, oh, I'm a prince of Egypt. I can do whatever I want. I had the best education. I was very proud of myself. I was a proud prince. I saw that God took me to be the leader of my people. So one day, I kill somebody. Yes, I'm ashamed of that. Because I, I think, I was a prince, I can do whatever I want. 
but I did a mistake. So the king said to me, kill Moses! He found I was not an Egyptian, but I was an Israel. So I ran away to the desert. And I went to the land of Midian. And in Midian, one day, I was taking care of my sheep. And I saw in the top of this mountain, I really went to the top of this mountain, really. I tell you the truth. I climbed up. I climbed up to that mountain. And I saw a vision. The last year in summer, I went to this mountain Sinai. And I said to God, God, show me the vision for CM. Show me the vision for CM. Why these kids are here at CM? And God told me that God sent you here to make you a global leader. To raise you up. To save God's people free. Because God sent me to set his people free. Listen to me. I saw the vision and say, what is this vision? Oh? I opened my big eyes like this. And I looked carefully. And I was approaching close. Closer. 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 With my eyes fixed on that vision. And then I hear a voice. I hear a voice. And the voice said, Moses. Moses. Take off your shoes. This is a holy ground. And I take off my shoes. <laughs> Who are you, Lord? Who are you? And he said to me, I am the God of your father and your grandfather and your great grandfather. I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And I came here to set my people free with your help. And I said, Lord, who am I? But the Lord said, I will be with you. He told me, throw your sticks. I said, oh. I throw my stick. And then suddenly it becomes a snake. Do you like snake? Me neither. And I was like, oh. <laughs> a snake. Without shoes. What can I do? So the Lord told me, pick up from the tail. You know, you must be clever. If you see a snake, never touch the snake by the tail. You should touch the snake by the head. And then you can catch because it will bite you. But the Lord told me, tell me from the tail. And I said, because I saw that the head was looking at me. But I obey. When God said to do something, even though you think it's no sense. You must still obey and believe. Teachers, you must still obey and believe. When God tells you and when the pastor tells you to do something that is no sense, just obey and believe. Because this comes from God. And I obey and believe. And then I took again the step from the tail. And becomes again my button. I went to Egypt and may perform many miracles by the hand of God. And we all come out from Egypt and walk again to this mountain of Sinai. And God tell me to climb up again. Shh. Listen. To climb up again. Because God wants to give His people His war. God give me His war. God said, first, do not worship any other God. Maybe you can worship money. Everybody likes money, right? 
Yeah. But if you like money more than God, that is an idol. You are worshiping something that God forbid you. And God said to us, do not make any idol. Anything that you put in between you and God, that can be an idol. Third, God said, do not misuse my name in vain. Never say, oh my God! Who teach you to say, oh my God? Who teach you? Who? 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 In your school, your teachers? They are not Christians. Christians never say, oh my God! Never use that war again. Oh my God is not for Christians. No Christian use that word. God said, do not misuse my name. Because God's name is holy. Then God said, keep the Sabbath holy. Today is Sunday. It's the Sabbath for Christian people. Today is the day of the Lord. The day when you come here to rest from your labors in this world. This is the day you don't go to academies, you don't go to study at school, you don't do homework. It's a day to worship God only. Hey, listen to me. Because your parents going to send you to academies on Sunday. Or you have to go to academies to study for your test. You have to go to academies to study for your university. That's not God's commandment. You will do, and you will remember my, my words. I'm serious, guys. I'm serious here. If you keep God's commandment, you will be a blessed people. Then God said, Honor your father and your mother. Your father and your mother. And God said, Do not murder. You can ask, how can we kill somebody? we just kids. Yes. But the Lord Jesus once said that. This. If you say to your brother and your sister, you are fool, then you are killing that person. You know that your lives have power. Power to bless or power to curse people. Eight. Seven, God said, do not commit adultery. It means that you must be faithful. You know what it means, faithful? To keep it straight in your promise. To keep it straight in your belief. To keep it straight in one single way. And later, when you get married, do not divorce. Do not looking for another person. Be faithful. Eight. Do not steal. Don't take sins without pain. Don't do it even though for fun. Oh, it's fun to just go to the supermarket and take one candy. Nobody see that. Or even though looking inside your parents' purse or bag or wallet. Nine. Do not lie. Don't tell lies. What is the difference between you and no church people, no Christian people? You always say the truth. Even though you will receive punish, you must to confess. You must confess what is true, what you have done, positive or negative. Finally, God says, do not covet. Don't envy people because somebody have more money than you, because somebody have better clothes than you, because somebody have better house than you, because somebody have better toys than you. Don't compare to each other. If you can start to compare, you start to covet. Be grateful for what you have. Give sense you to know, the Lord. 
People who have everything, they are not happy. But people who have a little, they, have, they know how to value things. They know how worthy any single thing in their life are worthy. Remember God's commandment. So let's gonna say all together. Let's read with me. Ready? Okay. Ten commandments. First. Hey, come on, one more time. All together. Ten commandments. First. Second. Third. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. These are the word of God. These are God's commandments. If you keep this, you will be blessed. God promised you to bless you. But I know these Ten Commandments are hard to keep. The Lord Jesus just summarized these ten in only two. He said, Love your God with all your heart and all your strength and love your, enemy, your brothers and sisters as yourself. Even though, love your enemies. Just love. If you love God and you love other people, you are keeping all these commandments. It's not hard to do if you love people. And the Lord Jesus said, If you love me, if you love me, keep my commandments. So how do you prove that you love God? How can you prove that? Give him God's commandments. That's it. I bless you. And I pray that you will remember this commandment not for golden bell, but for the rest of your life. And he can bless you in Jesus' name.